everybody. Hello. Oh, how is everybody doing on this Tuesday? Let me know. Ah, and for the replay, my name is Evelyn. I am the maker creator designer behind Pink Sheep Design. Welcome to my channel. I go live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Central Time here on YouTube. And I also go live every Friday at 12 p.m. Central Time on my Instagram channel. Um, so you can find me on Instagram at Pink Sheep Design as well. And I talk about all kinds of things during our live sessions, everything from community, being in the crochet community, to if you want to be a designer, if you want to be a tester, all of the different kind of jobs and roles within the community. We talk about those. We talk about yarn. We talk about hooks. We talk about patterns. Um, yeah, we talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. And a lot of times we will vote on different topics in my Facebook group. So if you're not in the Facebook group, you can join the Facebook group. It's open to anybody. You just have to request to join. Um, and if I don't have a link to that, I think there's a link in the description of this video. So if you go to that one, you can join the Facebook group, um, join in on the conversation. And there's a, a fly in here. And I don't know where he went. I thought he was down in there. He'll probably fly out. Hello, everybody. Okay, let me pull up my chat so that I can see it a little more easily because I do go live on my phone and I've got my computer in front of me. So if you see me looking this way, that's what I'm looking at. So let's pull this up. And today we are talking all about crochet hooks. Um, kind of an overarching topic. So I feel like I might have to dive deeper into some of these um, crochet hook topics as we move forward, but I figured this was a great place to start. We're going to dive into my crochet hook collection, talk about some of the different types of hooks that are out there, um, how they affect your grip. If you have different crochet hook grips, we'll talk about that. Um, and I would love for you guys to share your experiences with some of these hooks. If you own some of these hooks, um, what some of your favorite hooks are and what grip you use when you crochet. If you use a different grip, you know, depending on the project or if you are strictly, if you crochet a ver the very same way all the time. But let me pop out the chat. Bum, bum, bum. Pop out chat. And a huge thank you. I believe I mentioned this last time, but I was able to get my YouTube channel monetized thanks to you guys and getting me enough watch hours. So thank you, thank you. I appreciate you all so very much. Um, I am looking into YouTube membership options for people who just want to show support in some way. Um, maybe you um, don't want to buy my patterns. If you're not a bulky pattern, bulky yarn person, you can do that. Um, but I'm going to try to see what all of that entails and put together some membership options for you guys if you want to show additional support here on YouTube. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And let me... Okay, there we go. I had to get the chat blown up a little bit. And I hear my husband listening in the other room. <laughs> because I hear an echo. <laughs> okay, guys. So, I've got my chat popped up. And I'm going down here. That's okay. I just heard you. <laughs> Uh, okay, so who is here? I see Ellen is here. Happy Tuesday, Ellen. Welcome. Olivia is here. Shatika is here. Blessings to you as well. Dream Design Crochet. Hello, Emma. Hey, everyone. Uh, another cloudy day. Oh, and Dream Design Crochet found me recently. Thank you for joining in. I hope you enjoy these little chats. Another cloudy day. Hello. Uh, we have got Dawn is here. Hello, Dawn. And Kathleen is here as well. Looking forward to my new Pink Sheep hooks arriving this week. Woo! We are super excited. Um, if you guys have been following us for a while, you know that we 3D print our own jumbo crochet hooks and just recently started selling hybrids. So the hybrids are, it's our traditional 3D printed design because it is a very unique design uh, and we turned them into a hybrid handle so that we could make smaller metal hooks, um, especially for projects that require you to have super tight stitches that you're not 
going to use a plastic or a resin uh, style hook to create just because of the tension. The tension is going to keep you from using that kind of hook. Um, all right, I've also got my coffee. Cheers. Let me know if you've got some coffee or if you've got lunch in front of you because it is kind of lunchtime. I do have a donut. So I may, I may have my donut. Um, so yeah, let me know if you've, if you've got some coffee in your cup, if you're drinking something good, if you're eating something good, let me know. And we're going to dive in to today's topic. So get me some fuel. Mm -hmm. And hopefully my fly doesn't land on the donut. Okay. So... And I can show you guys, this is my first Nancy crop top made using ribbon yarn. You can see the back. This crop top is still in testing and the testing is going really, really well. Uh, it's actually the pattern test photos and, and feedback and everything is due this Wednesday. So this will be coming very soon. Um, I had a tester, shout out to Nicole. I don't know if she is here in the chat um, or if she joins in on my lives, I'm not sure. Um, but she made one of these out of ribbon yarn. So this is Hobie ribbon yarn, 100% cotton, it's a size five. And this crop top calls for a size five weight yarn, uh, but it calls for like a maker home deck style yarn, but I wanted to try ribbon yarn. Um, I did size down on my hook because it's really, this is a little bulkier and I wanted to make sure that I didn't, my gauge wasn't too big, but I really, really like how it turned out. I'm going to have to photograph it. This is really like just the scraps of what was left over from some of the colors that I had left from Hobie Ribbon Yarn from past projects. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited about this one. I should be releasing this crop top pattern probably this weekend if everybody submits their stuff in time. And it will be fully size inclusive from... 30 double a all the way to like a 50 f something like that whatever you know it's a very wide range we had some amazing testers that helped with this one so i'm super excited about it um it will be my second size inclusive crop top that i've ever released so big announcement that's really exciting um and then i did release one more announcement before we jump in all of the Ballin merch is live. So you guys actually helped vote on this design. So this is the Ballin design that is now out. There's apparel like this in my Etsy shop. There's also apparel in my Bonfire shop, which I think is now linked on my YouTube channel. So you guys can actually shop from the YouTube channel. Um, but Ballin, this was one that I got on a bag that I should be able to start selling in my bonfire shop soon, this big one. So this is a nice big tote bag. Um, I'm gonna try to get this added to my bonfire shop. So that's the ball in. And then I did get stickers, sticker, stickers, always. I love my stickers. So let's grab one to show you. I think I'm gonna end up having to get more drawers because I'm running out of space for all the new stickers. So that's the sticker. This is a big one too. This the because of the three inch whoop, three inch size just dropped it. Um, there you go. Ball in. Whoop. Ball in. Yep. So it's really playing off a similar style to this one, which I love so much. Yarn so little time. Baseball tee. I pretty much live in just my apparel now. So if I'm not wearing my crocheted cardigans and stuff in the summertime, I wear my crochet merch and crochet crop tops. So it's just everything crochet, right? You know, just live it. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. <laughs> um, all right. So Emma's got a cup of tea, water, and finishing up a blanket. I actually got my first custom order in a really long time. I don't usually take custom orders, but this is actually the lady who works at my post office, my local post office. And she wants me to make a blanket for her granddaughter. And so I told her, I said, you know, I don't usually take custom orders. It's not going to be cheap, you know, 
um, because I don't I don't take them often, but I would love to make it. You know, if you've got if your budget is in this area, let's let's do it. Um, it's going to be a super chunky toddler blanket. I just ordered some yarn from Joann's. It's just Bernat blanket, but I guess the um, daughter. So yeah, so her daughter. It's the granddaughter that she's making the blanket for, but her daughter um, likes neutrals. Um, so I got a really pretty. Um, color changing, self striping kind of burnout blanket yarn that is grays, creams, and browns. Really, really pretty. So I'll show you guys when I get it. And I may write the pattern up because it's going to be really, really, really simple. And I may just make it a free pattern on my blog um, as like a blanket. You know, you can make it any size, but this is the stitch count for just like a, you know, baby slash toddler blanket. If you want to make it bigger, it'll be really easy because it's really easy stitches. Um, but I thought about doing that because I've got to make it anyway, um, and I don't have any kind of blanket pattern anywhere, so I feel like that would be fun. Um, another cloudy day. The crop top is so cute. Thank you. It's going to be a fun one. I'm really excited. I'm wearing one right now. I wear my Nancy's every day. It's my go-to bra replacement, especially in the summer. Um, Nilla loves the Nancy. Ellen loves the new design. Yes, Ellen tested for me as well. It is a lifestyle, totally a lifestyle. Um, pink sheep, exactly. Pink sheep on the runway. I mean, I could do an entire runway show with just apparel and merch and patterns and all of that. Um, and pink sheep yarn, maybe one day. I would love to get a, um, to get a collaboration with a yarn company for, a pink sheep line of yarn. That would be super, super fun. And I know it that they've done it before because I think it's Alexander Travell. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, but she worked with Lion Brand and they made the Two of Wands yarn. So I know it happens. <laughs> so maybe one day, fingers crossed, that would be so cool, right? So it's like super chunky, colorful, crazy, amazing yarn. That would be amazing. Um, okay, so let's dive in. If you are a new crocheter um, and you are just joining my channel, um, you know, you may have hooks that you purchased just from Walmart or Joann's or Hobby Lobby. And I do want to go through some of my earliest hooks, uh, the ones that I used specifically when I was doing craft shows. And it was right when I realized that crochet could cause some problems if you're not being careful. Um you know, with the amount of time you're crocheting, not taking enough breaks, not taking care of your body, um, you know, the things like not moving around enough and stretching or drinking enough water can all affect your body. And then if you're also pushing your body to the limits and causing overuse problems, because you're using the same motions over and over again, the same muscles are being worked, um, which is why we'll also talk about grip. So, when I first started out, let's find some of my oldest hooks and I'll show you guys. I have all of these cans. There's another one. Oh, and get this one. And then I got this box full of hooks. Um, now, some of these are ones we sell. Not all of them are the personal collection, but they're quite, you know, it's just a, lot of, a lot of hooks. Again, it's a lifestyle, right? Didn't we say that? <laughs> it's, it's artwork. Um, but let's find some of the first ones that I bought because they are hanging out in here. So let's find my go-to hooks that I started out using. You may have some of these. Okay. Very first hook collection. And all of these were cheapo hooks. These are hooks that, well, one of them's not, but it, I got it in a giveaway. So at this point, I was not investing in my crochet hooks. I was finding cheap hooks that I liked and that I could maybe modify on my own. And you'll find lots of modification videos out there to try to modify your hooks to make them more ergonomic if you're having issues with that. Um, I probably won't make them because now I make ergonomic hooks, so I would rather people just get ergonomic hooks if they're ready to make that jump, you know? Um, okay. 
the majority of my patterns that I was making for craft shows called for a 10 millimeter hook or a 18 slash 20 millimeter hook and some of them maybe like a 12 millimeter hook. So I had a 10 millimeter tapered boy hook. So I'm pretty sure it's a boy brand. It's definitely tapered. Um, metal all the way to the end. And I was just using it this way, but I ended up modifying it and adding some of that kitchen cabinet stuff, the, you know, the sticky, the non-stick or stick stuff that goes in the bottom, you know, that stuff. <laughs> and then I also wrapped it in um, fabric that came from, I think, an old tank top of mine that didn't, wasn't, you know, wasn't any good anymore. And then I just wrapped a rubber band around it to make it all stay. So this was my go-to 10 millimeter hook for a long time. Um, and I keep it because that's part of the process. You know, I don't want to get rid of it. Um, I don't use it anymore. It actually ended up being a little too big for my hand. So that causes, can cause more problems than not. It really depends on your body and what you need. Um, hooks that are called ergonomic that work for some people may not work for everyone. So you have to test them out. Uh, this was number one. I used this one to make my Coffee Cats pattern. So if you guys have seen the Coffee Cats bundle in my Etsy shop, this was my go-to for that. Sometimes I would use this one to make my fingerless gloves pattern. Um, hats, sometimes I would use a 10 millimeter, but I ended up moving up to, this is an 11.5 and see, I did the same thing, but it does not have any fabric wrapped around it. It just has the rubber band holding that, um, kitchen stuff in place. I don't know what brand this is. Um, I'm pretty sure it came as a partner with this one. So if you are out and about, you may see a duo pack that you can purchase that is an 11.5 in that range, as well as a 18. And I think this is an 18. Let's actually test it because I do have my hook gauge in here. So if you guys didn't know, we do sell these. These are hook gauges. Um, it's a four by four inch square which is great for if you use chunkier yarn, most of your gauge, when it tells you to check your gauge, will be in a four by four range. But these also come with these nifty little hook sizers because a lot of these jumbos don't have sizing. So it just is made in China on the bottom and it's just a big blue hook. So I'm pretty sure, and actually I think it's a 16 millimeter. So we've got our 16 down here. And the 17 is a little too big. So you see when I put it in there, it's kind of moving around. When I put it in the 16, it's moving around a teeny tiny, tiny bit, but it won't fit in the 15. So it's right around a 16 millimeter. I totally thought that this was a bigger hook. So see, that's my fault. But this was my go-to forever. Um, and these are in the Etsy shop if, if anyone needs something like this. But it is very helpful because again, I made a huge mistake, fun little story time, um, when I was doing the Luna cardigan. So you guys, if you've been following me for a minute, you know about the Luna cardigan. It's the one that I always tell people to start with. If you've never made a cardigan before in your life, that's where to start because it's super, super simple, fits really nice, size inclusive, hits all the marks, all the check boxes. But I was a very, very new designer when the um, Luna cardigan was coming out. I need to cover my donut because I know that fly is going to land on it. Um, uh, very new designer when the Luna came out. It was my first ever long sleeve cardigan. I still didn't truly understand how to use the math to create all the different sizes. So I was just kind of guessing like, well, I'll just make this one a couple, a couple stitches wider and that should fit everyone. And because I did not check my hook, this is totally, I'm pretty sure this is the hook I used to make that cardigan. And I thought it was like an 18 millimeter hook. So when I sent the test pattern out, I told people that they had to use an 18 millimeter hook. And so when people started submitting their final pictures, I was like, why are these, why are these cardigans so big and loose? <laughs> it was my fault because it was a 16 millimeter hook. 
So I should have learned that lesson by now. I need to like mark on here somewhere with some tape or something that this is a 16 millimeter hook. Um, but this was my baby for a long time. I used this hook for all of my scarves. Um, it was mostly just scarves, but I used it for all my scarves and I made lots and lots and lots of scarves. So scarf hook, this one was for fingerless gloves, hats, headbands, cat ear hats, all of that middle of the road ones, the 11.5. And then this one was for all of my cat cozies. So like these three hooks got me through craft show season. Now, saying that, I did realize quickly that these were not the right fit for me. I needed to start investing in something that was a little better and wasn't homemade like this because this was still not cutting it for me. I was still having wrist and hand pain. Some of it was because I was overdoing it, but some of it was also because I hadn't found that sweet spot of exactly what I was looking for in a hook. So the next two that I'm going to talk about were part of the OG collection, my originals. This one was my very favorite hook to use. This is a 20, 20 millimeter hook. And this one I won in a giveaway that Knit Brooks did years ago, two or three years ago, four years ago, maybe could have been longer. But this was a hook made by B Queen, B Queen Collection. They no longer make all wooden hooks like this. So this is very, very special to me and very unique because they don't make these anymore. They only make hybrid style hooks like we just started making that have a wooden handle and a metal hook inserted in the handle. So you can see the 20 millimeter mark that they put on there stamped in the wood. Um, but it's, it's smooth and beautiful and inline and just wonderful. Now it is a little, little heavy um, and it was not the best ergonomic feel. I couldn't use this forever. It just wasn't the exact right fit, but it was so inspiring. Like it's, you know, when you're working with a beautiful hook and like you're taking pictures of your work as you're working with it, this showed up a lot on my Instagram feed when I won it because it was just inspiring and pretty. And I would even fake it. If I was using this one for a project, I would just stick this one in there for the picture because it was so much prettier. So Bee Queen Collection, you can still check them out. They make handles that look just like this. Beautiful, beautiful wood. Um, and I don't know if, I have to look, but I think they only do pre-orders. I don't know if they actually have hooks in stock all the time. Um, and let's look really quick just to be sure. So Bee Queen Collection. And if you purchased our Christmas mystery box last year, they actually make hand cream now, as well as like a lip balm. And if you purchased our Christmas mystery box, you got some of their hand cream. So that's the same, um, the same company. Okay, so they have a shop update happening August 30th at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So yeah, they don't have any crochet hooks in stock right now. I don't believe. Doesn't look like it. But they do have the lip stuff. Looks like they're sold out of their balm and their butter right now. But I'm guessing when they do a shop update, they may include all of that. Bye, Ellen. Have a wonderful day. And who else is here? We had a lot of people coming in. Uh, Joni's Not So Fast Life. Hello. And to the chat. Tracy, I'm sorry if I'm sorry I'm late getting ready for work. No worries, Tracy. We're just here hanging out. Um, I would love to see how pink sheep yarn would look. Me too. Maybe one day that'll stay at the top tier of like super fun goals, like writing a book up there with the big goals. Um, love the tool, love the hook collection. I go through phases with hook sizes, but I definitely have my favorites. Same. Um, hello and good afternoon. Have to head out. I already saw that one from Ellen. Yes. Have a wonderful day. And Jeannie. Hello, everyone. Hello. So yeah, that was added to my collection. So then I had four and then there were four. And then of course I had to have the big one because even as a crochet design, a crochet maker who was selling at shows, I loved chunky yarn and chunky hooks. And so 
The only stuff I made for my shows was using super bulky yarn because things worked up really, really quickly. And again, I need to put a link in the chat, but if you guys do shows, and I'm probably going to do a sale at some point here soon, um, focusing on craft show makes. So I have a craft show pattern bundle that has the cat cozies that I made with my 10 millimeter, the fingerless gloves, and the headband and the hat that I made with this one and um, the cowl that I made with this one. So super fast makes, perfect for craft shows. And then I'll probably put a few other pieces on sale that were ones that I would bring to craft shows as additional pieces because I only had a few in my lineup that I would, that I would stick with. So this hook is pretty god awful. I used it because it's the only thing I could find and I wasn't really huge on online shopping at the time when I bought this. Um, not really. And I just felt like I'm sure all of them are the same, <laughs> you know, especially with the bigger hooks. I just kind of assumed that there weren't a whole lot of options out there for the big hooks. So this one I found at Michael's. I actually even took some sandpaper to the sides of it to try to deepen this groove because that drove me crazy. I was always dropping my yarn. Um, it's kind of a mix between tapered and inline. I mean, technically, I guess... No, it's really not. So let's see. If I hold this up, it, I can't hold it up straight against this. It would have to be like this. So there's some room there. So it is like a mix between tapered and inline. It has a little bit of a pointier head. Um, but at this point, once I had my collection here, this lovely collection, and of course I had the outliers. So when I first started crocheting, you know, you had... Um, these kinds of hooks that I tried. So this is the boy brand with the handle. You can actually take these handles off with some some brute force. Um, and I have a feeling that may have been what I did here. So I may have taken the handle off and made my own because these are similar. I think this is, yeah, this is a 10 millimeter with the ergonomic handle. Um, I don't remember the last time I've used these, but I like to have them for reference. Um, I also had, actually, the captain bought me this beautiful set of the Rosewood hooks. So these are in lines. Um, they're smaller, so this was a smaller set. I think this might have been one of the biggest ones in the set, and it's an 8 millimeter, and it's actually rubbed off because I've used it too much. Um, but the 8 millimeter, I used these to make crop tops for a long time, but again, these don't have any of the ergonomic grips, so after a while I realized I couldn't use them as much unless I did something to alter them to give them more of a grip. Um, and I actually had the idea, I thought about maybe turning these into our own hybrids for myself so that I can use them more. That would be really fun um, now that we're offering hybrids. And let's see what else. I think that's really it for the originals. Now I have some metal hooks that were really little that um, I think for a little while there I was making little friendship rings. So I, you know, brought out some of the teeny tinies that I had and who knows where they came from. They might have been my grandmother's. They might have just been something I bought a long time ago. I have no idea, but I have a few like very, very small hooks. Um, I say that like two and three in the two and three range that I was using with embroidery thread to make little friendship rings, um, which is another pattern I should write up at some point for the blog, because that would be super fun for, for um, summer shows. Um, so now I got to a point where I was just kind of looking at cute crochet stuff. So I, you know, if I would go to the store, I would check out their collection. Um, I do not own any prim hooks. I've heard good things about them. They are the plastic ergonomic hooks that you can purchase. Um, I should probably get some just to have them, you know, as an example and, and a comparison to, to other hooks, especially when it comes to what interests me a lot of times is the length. So how much length does the hook have before it increases, if it increases at all, to any kind of ergonomic handle? Um, and that's something that I've had to look at now that we're making the hybrids is how long should the metal part be? And we're going to dive into that as well when I show you guys some of the new hooks that I have. So this was a hook that I added to my collection very randomly, but I was really, really glad that I did because this came became one of my favorite hooks. It replaced this one. 
So it's heavier. That was the only, only downside about this hook for me when it replaced this one is that it's pretty heavy. So let's compare. I've actually got my scale right here. So we can compare the weight. So the original one that I probably got at Walmart is 0.5 ounces. This one, 0.5 ounces. This one is 1.4 ounces. So it's more than double the weight of the hook that I was using, which for me was not good having wrist issues, but the ergonomic feel of this handle was just perfect because it, I choke up on my hooks. So the, the placement of all of this was actually great. My hand landed right at the edge of this where it started to flare out again. And I just enjoyed using this one a lot more. This was from Hobby Lobby. It was a random Hobby Lobby find. I don't think they make them anymore. I couldn't find them. They are not labeled again. So I would have to make sure. Yep, 16 millimeter, possibly a 15.5 because I know that that's also a standard. So both of these may be 15.5 versus a true 16 because both of them have a little wiggle room when I place them in that 16 spot, but they don't quite fit in the 15. This one's closer. This one could almost pass as a 15 actually, but it's tight. So it's between a 15 and a 15.5. This one is definitely a little bit larger. Yes, they're old Hobby Lobby hooks. So when I bought that one, I also bought this one, which ended up being a wah wah for me. It's lighter, um, but for me, the grip was different on this one. Um, it, it's just, let's see if we can compare them. I think it's shorter. Yeah, see how much shorter it is? And that's an issue for me. I still need the length because when I hold it here, um, it just doesn't feel the same in my hands as this one did. So I didn't use this one as much. This is a 10 millimeter, I believe. We can check it again. Handy dandy check tool, because there is definitely no marking. It's actually a little smaller than a 10. It was probably marked a 10, I'm sure, because that's the standard. It may have been a nine. I don't have my calipers up here, um, but it's pretty loose in the 10. So it may have been a nine, nine millimeter. But I bought it to try to make my coffee cats with to replace this one. And that didn't happen. It just sat in my collection and looked pretty. Because it is pretty. It's bright green. That was nice. And these feel a lot like the candy shop hooks from Furls. And I had been eyeing the candy shop hooks because I was reading all the things about the ergonomicness, wonderfulness of Furls. But I wasn't ready to invest and the candy shop hooks were pricey. So when I found these, I was like, let's give these a go. And I will show you guys, which we're going to talk about candy shop in a minute, but I do have one candy shop hook. So in comparison, they are actually quite different. So if you look at these two compared, but candy shop is actually even a teeny bit shorter than this kind of Hobby Lobby knockoff. Yeah. So you can, obviously you can get an idea now that I'm not going to have the nicest things to say about the candy shop hook just because this didn't work for me either. So once the hooks start to get that short, I'm not as big a fan. All right, so let's see if I'm continuing to go in order. Ah, so again, this is where I really started to think about investing in my hooks because I found this one and I was like, okay, there are other hooks out there that might work better for me, even in the jumbo range. So I need to start exploring and seeing what's out there. And at this time, I did also appreciate supporting small businesses. So I started looking into the handmade hook world, but I wasn't ready to spend well, I say that, but I spent quite a bit on my first two handmade hooks. So I'm going to show you guys those as we're moving through this wonderful, expanding collection. Um, these hooks were handmade by a lady in Greece. And let me see if I can actually find, because I want to make sure I give her a shout out and I'll show you guys these up close. Let's go to my website because I did include her in my hook guide. Jumbo. And I do have this big jumbo hook guide 
in my uh, on my blog and I do need to put that in the description here let me write that down what all am I including um where did my pen go all right so I'm going to add links to be queen and I'm going to add a link to my jumbo hook guide okay all right now let's see if I can find her Ba, 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 ba. Um, I hope I didn't remove her. I may have because I don't know if she makes hooks anymore. Oh, here we go. Oh, she does still have hooks. Okay, and they're big. She's got big hooks left in her store. Little Things Blogged. Like, as in blogger, Little Things Blogged. Um, she currently has... Let's see what kind of hooks she's got still. Oh, she's got a few hooks left. Yes. So she has, let's see what sizes. I think she has some smaller ones too. Um, she's got a seven millimeter, eight millimeter, 30 millimeter, 25 millimeter, uh, 50 millimeter, uh, eight millimeter, six millimeter, five millimeter, and I think that might be it. Oh, I said 50. All of the ones that I said 50 about were 25 millimeter. They're just US 50. Um, but she's got one, two, three, four, four 25 millimeters, and then some of the smallers, smaller ones. Um, she has a few that are similar to these. This one, oh, and they aren't marked. I thought these were marked. I think it's a 10 and a 12 though. Let's see. Yep, so this is like a 10.5 because it's not quite fitting in my 10, but it's a little big in the 11. So this is around a 10.5, between 10 and 10.5. And I did purchase these to try to find, again, a replacement for this to use to make my um, cat cozies, 10 millimeter. So this is the first one that I bought. And I did buy these together. I bought these as Christmas presents for myself. And I believe this one's a 12. So this is the other one that I bought, 12 millimeter. And let's see, yes, that is right around a 12 to 12.5. Because it fits, fits in one way, but then when I go to turn it, it gets really tight. So it's just over the 12 millimeter range. So I've got the 12, flip it, 12 right here is the one that I was putting it in there. So it doesn't really want to go in this way. But when it goes in this way, it's fine and it just gets tight. So it's probably a teeny tiny bit bigger than a 12. Um, but these were purchased from Little Things Blogged. What is her name? Her name is, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of someone's Etsy shop, you can see their name. Uh, so Tanya. And again, she's in Greece. So not only did I pay good money for the hooks, I paid to get them shipped. And they also they were also hooks that made lots of appearances in my Instagram feed because they are gorgeous hooks. Sadly, they didn't work out as well as I thought they would for me. And again, it's all about how you hold your hooks and what you need for your grip. How big are your hands? What's comfortable for your hands? And so for me, I did like this grip here it it was so short though this part was so short that i ended up holding on to this part which wasn't super comfortable on my pinky because again i hold them right around here so my pinky was grabbing onto this portion which didn't end up being super comfortable for me to use regularly but again they showed up on my feet a lot because they were gorgeous they're very lightweight um let's see i can weigh these. This one was a little bit better. Again, I think if it didn't have this piece here, I might have used it more often, but I think this is what would get me because I would be holding it here, but yet my pinkies would be curling around this portion that stuck out right here. So I ended up not using these as much as I thought I would for like crochet marathons, which is what I thought that I was going to be using them for when I bought them. Um, 
This one is 1.1 ounce. So not too bad, not too bad. Not as heavy as like this one, but definitely lighter than this. This is what I was using and it is 1.6. So a little bit lighter. And then this other one is actually 0.8. Is this one even lighter? Yeah, this one's not even an ounce, this one. So this one's actually lighter than this one. Now, this is what was interesting, and this is where I think when you're looking at handmade hooks and people that you want to support because they're just nice people, and that happens. You know, we support people just because we feel a connection to them and we want them to succeed. Um, so even though I didn't use these like I thought they would, I continued to give that person shout outs because they're they're beautiful, you know? And then when I decided I wanted to look for, um, cause like I said, when I had this 25, I was like, well, there's not a whole lot of options out there for 25 millimeter hooks. I went back to this shop and I actually ended up buying another hook from her just to see. And this was right before we started 3D printing our own hooks. So this one has not gotten a ton of use because we 3D print our own now but this hook was perfect. So this one is 25 millimeter, it's super light. So compared to something like this, this big behemoth, which you don't even need all that length. So this was perfect for me and it's in line. It's got a nice deep groove, unlike this one. And for me, if I'm holding it here, it's perfect. So there's not any, you know, pieces that are poking into my hand. The grip is fantastic. So if you like someone and you're supporting them, even if the first couple hooks don't work out, you can still go buy more stuff from them if you want to. And that's how I felt about this person. Cause I was like, these are beautiful hooks. They're nice and light. So I had to, you know, go back and give it another shot. So I ordered another hook from Greece and it's perfect. And I just love that I have this in my collection. Um, you know, and actually our hooks are modeled very similarly to these because I realized how great that could be. So you can see this is similar. We've got a little more point here, um, but lengthwise, they're almost exactly the same. Hers is a little bit longer and hers does have the piece here that my um, fingers can kind of fit into at the bottom, but that's the difference. Okay, so let's see what you guys are chatting about. Um, Jeannie said that they don't, that the Hobby Lobby ones, they were great. So you have some of those. And that's, I really, I didn't like the smaller ones, but this was a lifesaver for a long time. Um, Joni says, I need a flat or a flat or groove for my thumb on the hooker. It just spins around in my hand. Um, as pretty as the wooden ones are, they're too round for me, but I do have a few because they're so pretty. Exactly. So sometimes we do just buy them because they're pretty. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was one of my favorites. Um, and that was, like I said, once I really started investing, that's when the hook collection starts to grow. When I realized that it's worth the time and effort, even if it's just to be a part of the bigger community and to support some of these artisans who are putting their work out there. Um, so let's walk through some of the additional hooks that I started purchasing um, and, and the different kinds of hooks that are out there. So you guys already know we've got inline and tapered. So we've got kind of this boy style tapered hook. Um, this is kind of a mix between the two because it looks more in line. It's not completely in line. It's a little bulbous, which is kind of strange. Um, and the same thing goes for some of these hooks you can find on Amazon. You can buy an entire set of these on Amazon but this is so clunky up here. It's a very strange design to me um, for this kind of hook. I don't know anyone who has these and absolutely loves them. If you do, give them a shout out. They're very short. So if I were holding this where I usually hold my hook, somewhere between here and here, there's not even a full grip there. Um, so there's a fine line between a hook for me being too long and being too short. Again, it's totally personal preference once you've had time to work with them. But the good news is there's a lot of hooks like this 
out there that are very affordable. So like I said, you can get an entire set of these for, for fairly cheap. I think it's like 10, 15 bucks. I don't think it's even 20 and it's a whole jumbo set. So like there's, this one is the 18 millimeter. This one's the 20. There's these two. So you can give them a try. See if you like the shorter, the shorter hook. Um, if you like this kind of style of a, a tapered, it's got a little bit of a point, but it's pretty, pretty bulky up there on the top. Um, and then you've got, for instance, this is a true inline style. This is a Susan Bates uh, Luxite style hook versus this big blue one, which is probably like a boy or an off brand. Um, but you can see the difference. I think they called these speed hooks. So the ones that they taper right here to the top. So they're a little thin, but they're very pointy, very sharp. Um, these are the hooks that I include in my learn to crochet kits. So there's that. And then I started looking because again, I wanted to find a replacement for this. This is before I bought the one from Greece and I found the hooks by the hook nook. So this is it. And if you're just looking at it, it's gorgeous. Again, I did buy hooks because they were pretty, but I was really hoping that because this was plastic, that it would be lighter. Okay. And let's do a comparison. So this one I found at Michael's very, very similar in length. The hook nooks is a teeny bit shorter. So you can see on the bottom, obviously it has a much better groove, but it has no point. All right. So I was trading off a few different things. Uh, so let's weigh the wooden one. It is 2.8 ounces. All right, so I was looking for something lighter. This one is four ounces. <sighs> so obviously, as soon as I tried to use this, I just couldn't use it. It wasn't going to happen. My wrist was yelling at me <laughs> to, to put the hook down. Um, so I couldn't use this for anything but a photo prop for me it just it was just too heavy um i feel like if maybe they had chopped off the end and shortened it maybe it would have taken some of the weight off because again there's no reason for these hooks to be this long um there is there is like i said a, a fine line for me this is too short this is too long uh so of course when we started designing our own hooks uh let's see i had to find a middle ground so you guys can see, this is our 25 millimeter hook. This is a 20, but they make a 25 um, in these little shorties from Amazon. And then this is the 25 millimeter from the hook nook. Now I can't speak to her other hooks. Um, the other hooks that she makes, she does make a full range of sizes for these, um, but it's, it's interesting. I would be interested to know just how much lighter they get as they get smaller. Um, I've had some people say they've broken, but again, they're plastic hooks, so you can't expect them to hold up like metal ones. So I don't usually take a ton of points off unless they arrive broken. And I have seen people where they've arrived broken, but I would think that the hook nook would replace them if they arrived broken. Um, so couldn't use that one. Have not tried her other hooks though. So not bashing them. I just couldn't use the 25 because it was too heavy. Uh, let's see. And they're also colored. So I actually can't believe I don't have an entire set of these because every single size is another really, really pretty like translucent color. So they'd make beautiful photo props and I'm sure the smaller ones are much lighter, especially like the 10 and below. So I think she has the even smaller ones. Um, okay, so let's put this one up. So we talked about inline versus tapered. We've talked about the fact that there are hook makers out there like Prim. Um, the Hook Nook has her own line um, of all the different ones that are more of a manufactured feel. They're not like a handmade item. They're manufactured by someone. You've got Susan Bates. You've got Furls. So Furls comes up a lot. I actually did a full review of our hooks versus Furls because I feel like I'm, we're kind of the closest to what Furls is doing because they do offer some jumbo hooks and they are still in a sense handmade even though there is a little more of that mass production feel because they have to maintain at this point in their business um, that quality control of every hook being exactly the same um, 
and I don't know their process, but I have a feeling they have, I don't know how all of their hooks are made, but it sounds like they're still handmade, um, whatever that means, because <laughs> I don't know the process. So let's talk about furls and my collection, my collection of furls. So this was my favorite furls hook and my favorite 10 millimeter hook up until we started 3D printing our own hooks. This is the Furls Galaxy Streamline Resin Hooks. They have the mark on the side. They have lots of different colors. They're fairly affordable. I think they're like 30 bucks, 28 bucks, something like that. They've got a nice inline style. Um, this grip, this level um, of width for me is exactly what I need. Um, so the, the width of their handles compared to something like this that I created myself, these help reduce my pain and my risk. They're not going to be for everyone because some people need the larger hook grip. Furls is not going to give you that. Um, we, we wouldn't be able to give you that except on our big hooks. Again, if you're using like our 20s, but these aren't an ergonomic style. They don't have any kind of um, additional grasp here. It's really just the fact that they're so much lighter than other 25 millimeters. Um, but we did style the width of our 3D printed hooks on the width of the furls hooks because for me that's what worked and in the end I was designing our hooks for me because I knew I was going to use them even if nobody bought them. So, uh, but this, I do like these. I have heard that if you are going really, really teeny with the resin, you're going to have a higher chance of breakage, of course, because it's not metal. Um, the Odyssey for me, this is also still one of my favorite hooks to use for my crop tops. This is a 5.5 millimeter hook. It is an inline style. Um, there is a little more weight to this one, uh, but it doesn't seem to bother me with these. I really like them. I can crochet for a long time with them. Um, and I will show you guys. I do have an old Furls 20 millimeter. Didn't use it a lot. It's a lot heavier. Um, and again, I had this one that was my go-to. This one's much, much longer. It's definitely a heavier hook. It doesn't have as much of a groove here to grasp it. And the hook, even though it's a point, it doesn't have that extended point, which is not, to me, this is much more helpful having the extended point than it just being like pointy on the top, like a rounded one with a point at the top. So this was an old furls. I don't think they make these anymore, these wooden jumbos. Um, the rest of my furls collection, so I've got the Odyssey. I do, I do like these. I have heard that this can break, but I choke up on my hook. So I'm never gonna be holding my hook way down here and putting the tension on the breakage point. I'm always gonna be protecting that with my hand. So it's gonna be less likely that I'll have a break here unless I just use it. It's gonna weaken as you use it, but I've had mine for quite a few years now um, and I still use it pretty often. Now, the rest of the Furls collection, if you guys have never seen them, um, and Let's see. It's fun to collect interesting designs of hooks. Yes. And thank you. So, uh, jo Joni says your collection is really beautiful. Um, it's been fun to collect them. You know, it's, it's a, it's a fun, fun thing. Just got to watch the money. <laughs> um, let's see. Hello, Gloria. Welcome. Uh, and yes, yeah, Samantha says four ounces sounds way too heavy and uncomfortable. It definitely is for me. And Another cloudy day says it's amazing how you can feel the weight at the end of the hook as you stitch. Yes, it um, makes a big difference, especially if you already know that you're having wrist issues. So I did invest in these two hooks. This is a candy shop furls, 13 millimeter. This is a an alpha furls, 15 millimeter. So those have always been, you know, they're in that kind of go-to size range from 10 to 16 for me. And they're way too short for me. I just, I wanted to love them. They're beautiful. This is that bright, bright orange color, almost like a burnt, bright burnt orange. It's, it's sparkly. Um, this one is nice and sleek and smooth. It reminds me a lot of this one and the way that the wood is treated. And I 
just couldn't love them. Now this one, the, the groove is nice and deep, but it's not pointy. It's, it's quite rounded. And again, very, it's smaller. The width of the handle is smaller. And if I hold it here, I run out of handle when I'm holding it. Same thing with this one, because they're the same height. Um, I run out of handle when I hold it. There's next to no grip. There's, there's no groove. So I was slipping yarn. So I was not able to grip my yarn. The yarn kept slipping out of the hook. And it's also not very pointed at the top. So if we compare our 3D printed hooks that we make, let's see if I've got one in here. That's, um, well, here's a 12. So we can do a comparison between the 12 and the 13. So this is the 13 millimeter candy shop and the um, 12 millimeter pink sheep. We made sure to have the deeper groove, the pointier tip, and then a little more length. So if I'm holding here and running out of space, on this one I'm holding here, and it gives my hand somewhere to rest. Now, um, our 10 to 12 millimeter, these are what we're calling our traditional jumbos. So they're all 3D printed, fully 3D printed, and then we coat them with resin. We did extend the length of the 14 millimeter and up. So this is the standard length of our 10 millimeter, 11 millimeter, and 12 millimeter. It's a little bit shorter, but that was really to kind of encourage people to choke up on their hooks a little bit so that it gives more um, stability to the smaller part of the hook shaft. All right, because if you're holding down here, it's going to be just like furls. You're always going to have a weak point where the hook comes into the handle because this is a thinner portion of the hook. So if you're choking up on your hook, you're going to protect it a little bit more. Now, I'm not as concerned with that on the bigger hook, so we actually added a little bit of length so I could hold a little further down on here. And you can see the length difference right here. So if I move it up, that's the length difference in those two hooks. All right, so I got my furls. Now let's talk about the handmade options that are out there. And I don't have an example of all the different handmade kinds of hooks, but I feel like I've got the main three. There's three main types of hook handles, like hybrids, that people are making. One of them is clay. So this is an example of a polymer clay handle. This was made by Emma of What the Hook Creations based in the UK. Um, and I will, again, I'll add this. Let me write that down. I'm going to add that to the description. What the hook. And I have two more that I'm going to write down. Okay. So there's polymer clay that people use to coat hooks. This is a boy. This is actually, I think this is an Amazon knockoff of a boy brand because it's a little pointier. We buy these as well for our hybrids. Um, and they're a little different from a boy, but they are not quite as sharp as an inline like a Bates. So these come in all shapes and sizes. People make straight polymer clay, they make twisted polymer clay, they make sculpted polymer clay. So there's tons of hook handles out there like that. And the main thing that you have to look at, and I'll show you the difference. So here's another polymer clay handle. This one is by Knickknacks and Knots. Um, and this is a Bates, so you guys can see. I got a Bates handle for this one. This one is a 10 millimeter. So you can see she put this into the clay. And this one is an eight millimeter, also stamped into the clay on the bottom. So both of these, um, are the polymer clay. This one's got a coating over the top, some kind of coating or varnish or resin. I'm not sure what she used. But the main thing to keep in mind with clay is clay is gonna be heavier. So if you are getting a an already heavier hook, I feel like the Susan Bates or just the metal hooks in general that are um, metal, so jumbo. So this is a larger metal hook. It's already gonna be heavier because it's bigger and it's metal and you're adding clay clay is heavier. So keep that in mind. If you already have issues with the weight of hooks, you can always ask. You can ask someone who makes the hooks, 
what's kind of on average the weight of this style of hook handle. Or you can just make sure that the clay handles that you get are on smaller hook sizes. So you could get, go with your kind of three to five to six range instead of jumping into like the 10. And you can also ask the hook maker if they make clay handles on plastic hooks or wooden hooks because those are gonna be lighter. So that would be an interesting option as well. If you're just in love with a hook style, color, clay creation, you could find out if they would create them on a plastic or a wood hook. Keep in mind, if you ask that, they may tell you, we can't guarantee that these aren't gonna snap if you're trying to use them for Emmy Groomy. And a lot of handmade hook makers talk about that. You should not be using your handmade hooks that are not metal as the base for things like amigurumi, baskets, purses, and things that require super tight stitching. Because you have to know that a material that's not metal, it's gonna be harder to stand up to something like that. So I always go for metal hooks if you're gonna be using super tight stitches, but you can find metal hooks with great cute handles. So that's clay, we've got clay. And that was shout out to Emma, What the Hook Creations, and knickknacks and Knots. So you can check both of them out. Then there's resin. So we have resin poured handles. Now, this was something I wanted to talk about really quick too, and I know we're over time, but this is really great info, so I figured I would keep talking for a minute, is how far do you want your handle to go down on your hook? It's important to know, and a lot of it has to do with grip. For me, this is a great point because I don't need a thumb grip, okay? So this would actually be, this was harder for me to use because the handle is so far away. I don't hold that far back on my handle. So what ends up happening is if I go to use this hook, I'm gonna hold it here, which means I'm not getting to take full advantage of the, um, of the hook handle like I'd like to. Like most people are gonna wanna hold it here, but I wanna control. I wanna, I wanna be up here with my hook instead of back here. So you wanna make sure you look, ask questions if you have to, but find out how much of the metal hook is sticking out and if you prefer a different length and if they do custom. So if you saw this, you loved it, but you wanted a hook that was further down in there, then you could always ask, do you ever make them where they're a little bit shorter or a little bit longer? And don't be upset if they say no. A lot of hook makers don't do customs because it takes a lot longer. So if they've come up with a standardized method that fits the majority of their customers, then they may not have the time or ability to make a custom order. But that's a big difference and some people prefer holding their hook further down. For us, because we're talking about resin, I'll go ahead and throw in our 3D printed hybrids that are new, which we're super excited about. And we do still have some of these in the shop. Um, this is what ours look like. So if we do a comparison, this is the uh, polymer clay. And here is one of our, one of my resin coated ones. And this is Sofari Sof Crochet. Safari crochet. So I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I'll put a link in the bio. She's actually going to come on one of our pink sheep and design pink sheep and friends chats very soon. Um, but you can see the difference. And also with this one. So you can see the difference there. And I did base ours. I wanted to try to find a good standard. So to start out, we used a standard that was where boy places their handle when you purchase ergonomic hooks, that's where I chose to put mine. For me, that means that if I'm holding this hook and I still want to hold up here, holding down here, this is where my finger reaches. Now, my hands are like medium sized. I don't have really small hands. I don't have really big hands. So if your hands are teeny, then it may be too far for you to reach up here. And, or if your hands are really, really large, maybe that's too short for you. It's gonna be difficult to tell because we kind of have to go with what works for me because I know, and then we can base that off of feedback. Um, but that's what ours look like right now. And then there's also the Susan Bates version that we've got. You can see the difference here. And actually the Bates is a little bit shorter so if I was holding it here, my finger comes a little bit higher on this one. 
and this is our uncoated. So this does not have a coat of resin on it. And this one does. So you can see the shininess. Anytime it's got like glitter and stuff in there, we've resin coated it. There we go. Okay. Let me make sure. Ah, so the last one, because I know we're already over, is going to be the wood turned hooks. So I only have, well, I have two or three. I have this one, which I told you guys about, but then I've got this one. So this is a maker that I don't believe is making hooks at the moment anymore. It's Maker 37. This is a six millimeter hook that was turned. And I believe that it's husband and wife. The husband was making the hooks and I think they moved and didn't have room for their lathe. I'm not really sure. Um, I haven't used this one a ton because I'm not a huge fan of wood hooks and the way they feel. Um, but this is one of those where I just wanted to support them. So like you can just support people and have it be like, oh, this is just gorgeous and it's pretty for pictures and I can have it in my collection. And I maybe have used it once on a project and I didn't finish the whole project with it because it's just not right for my style of crochet and the way that I like to feel. I just don't really like the wooden hooks as much um, unless they're super, super treated. Like this is really, really smooth um versus this feels more like a handmade turned hook but it really does depend on your preference and what you like out of your hooks um when i'm working with hooks this small i'm probably going to go with a metal hook and if that's a hybrid great um which is actually exciting now because we have our hybrids um, this one is the five this is actually probably the exact one that i used for the crop top i showed you guys earlier I was using a Susan Bates. I do like the Bates. I'd never used just a metal Susan Bates hook like this at this, that's this little. Um, but I do really like these and all of these are stamped. So all of our hybrids are going to come with a stamp on the bottom with the size. Um, so you'll know, you know, <laughs> um, but I would love to know from you guys, you know, at this point, like I said, um, I didn't mean for the Bates to be smaller. So this next release, we're going to release these hooks this Friday and there's a whole bunch of them. So they're all ombre rainbow fades. So we've got some that are like a gold to orange. We've got some that are uh, gold to greenish blue. We have some that are purple to pink. Uh, let's see, we've got some that are uh, purple all the way to gold. So there's going to be a bunch of different options. We do have both Bates and Boy options. So there's the Bates, there's the Boy. But as you can see, if you like shorter shafts, probably, probably not appropriate phrasing. Um, so see, mine was like super short when I made this because I don't work with like crazy weird stitches that you need more space on your hook. This is what this is what I was using because I was using single crochet, half double crochet. That's all I needed. Um, if you like the shorter piece, so or if your hands are smaller and you know that you're going to hold your hook here and you want to be able to reach the tip, so you can see I'm here. If I put my finger up, that's where I reach on here. This Friday's release of Susan Bates is right up your alley because I am going to probably extend them a teeny bit on the next release. I feel like these were a little short because I didn't really want them to be any shorter than the baits, but they're probably about two millimeters shorter than the baits. And with this one, if I'm here and I hold, see, I just don't go quite as far up the hook. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at with those, but we're still in the learning phase. We're continuing to improve, but we love, we love these so far. We've gotten great feedback. And I was going to say another thing to keep in mind is, do your, are your hands cold or sweaty when you crochet? Because I've gotten already gotten feedback that these uncoated hooks are really nice if your hands get sweaty because there's a good texture to it. Whereas if your hands get sweaty on something that's resin coated, so like either a resin poured hook or um, like ours, we resin coat. So this kind of coating here, sometimes isn't that great a feeling when your hands get sweaty because they're slipping around on the hook. And I know somebody was talking about, was it Joni was talking about how they needed, um, a thumb grip. So we don't have a thumb grip, but these have better texture. 
So if you have sweaty hands and the hook is slipping around, it's going to be less likely because there's texture to this that it's going to be able to just slide around in your hand. It may still because you may hold with a loose grip. And in that case, it's going to spin just because it's round, but it's not going to spin because it's slippery. So I've had some great feedback about the uncoated ones for that reason. So if you like a little bit of texture to your hook handle, um, so even if you like um, the kind of rubber feel, because the rubber has the grippiness. So if your hands are getting sweaty, it's not going to just slip around like it would on something like this that's just slick. Um, and the good news is our uncoated hooks are finally what I feel is a really good entry level point price point if you've ever wanted to try out our um, hook handles. So you can see it's based very, very much off of the style of our hooks. Um, so if you've ever wanted to try out the ergonomicness of our hooks, these are $25. These are gonna be $25 um, to purchase the uncoated version. Whereas our hybrids that are resin coated are still going to be $45. Um, and we have had a few people ask about the $45 price point on these. And it's interesting because we thought we were going to be able to make them cheaper. We really, really did. Um, they take just as much work because they have their own issues <laughs> when we're trying to work on them. So first of all, we have to buy the hooks. So we're actually having to invest in more material to make these. Um, and then it's actually really difficult to coat around the top when you've got the space. So you can see there's spaces on either side of the hook that the resin wants to go into. So trying to figure out the best way to coat around the top um, has been fun. And then when we go to wash them, because we resin coat them, sand them, resin coat them, when we're washing them, we have to give them more dry time because water gets down in there. So we dry them one way, and then water gets in there, so we dry them the other way, so we have more dry time between them. So we realized at that point, we just had to keep them across the board. So any of our hooks that are resin coated that go through that process are going to be 45. And then for now, these kind of entry level uncoated will be 25, because that's a great difference. You know, at least we feel like it's a good difference if you want to start collecting some of our hooks. So I hope this was helpful. I mean, this was a fun little dive into my collection, how it started, how it evolved, when I decided to start investing money, what I look for when I invest money in crochet hooks. Um, and at some point we'll have to talk a little bit about how to vet crochet hooks um, when you're looking into the handmade market, because you're gonna be putting more money in when you purchase from a handmade small business. Um, and then I also want to talk about supporting. So we talked a little bit about that too, though. If you buy from a small business, don't dog them. I mean, if the hooks don't work out, you can let the seller know. I mean, give your honest feedback to the seller. But keeping in mind that there are so many different people that need so many different things from a hook, a hook that didn't work out for you may still work out for the majority of the people that they sell to. So leaving a really negative review instead of going to the seller and saying, hey, this didn't really work out for me. Do you have any um, advice or do you ever change your hook style specifically for what people need? Um, you know, it can be a way to support them because not every hook is for everybody, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad hook. So I would keep that in mind. Um, like I said, I've bought hooks that didn't work for me. I did not leave negative reviews. I did not go to the seller and say it was awful because it was still a work of art. They put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, like I said, specifically speaking of ones like this, I still shout out her hooks. If I do a hook roundup, I'm going to include her because she works really hard and they're beautiful. And somebody, this is probably perfect for somebody's hand. She wasn't perfect for my hand. So keep that in mind, know what you need, know what you're looking for, and that can help you avoid purchasing hooks and spending a lot of money on hooks that may not be the right fit for your grip and your needs. And we forgot to talk about grips. So we'll have to do a whole video about different grips and how they're affected. And I kind of wanted to do a video trying out different grips because I don't pencil grip. So um, I can, I taught myself, so it might be fun for me to go through and try to use pencil grip on all these hooks. <laughs> that would be a, a fun little challenge and see if I can actually do it. Um, Cause I have not tried to pencil grip with our new ones either. So I think that would be fun. All right. 
quick jump into the combos, uh, com combos, into the comments before I hop off because I'm 15 minutes over. This was a good chat though. Um, love, love, love the orange, one of my favorite colors. Um, another cloudy day. I also hold close to the hook part. Yep. Um, it would be interesting for everyone to share how we all hold and actually crochet. I tap my finger on the yarn to make sure it's in place. Automatic response to make sure I have control of the yarn. That's interesting too. Um, reminds me of the drink sex on the beach with those colors like that. Yep. The orange and pink one that is, uh, love the wood turned hooks. Yeah, me too. Uh, need to get one of your hybrids and our new hybrids. We only have really small hooks in the shop right now. You can check them out. We still do have a few uncoated hooks that are up for grabs in the $25 price range, but they're all in the small category. So like 3.125, 3.5. I think maybe the only sizes we have left will have all the different sizes in this Friday's release. So this Friday, we're going to have uncoated rainbow ombre, resin coated rainbow ombre, and then a mix of both Susan Bates and tapered boy style hooks in that release. So this Friday. So put that on your calendar if you're looking. Um, I know that the larger sizes have gone more quickly and we're going to start looking at making more of the larger sizes, less of the smaller sizes based on what you guys are purchasing. Um, great conversation. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Um, it's time for yarns. It's pretty cool. Thanks. Um, and Joni's enjoyed this totally fun. Love seeing your collection and lots of tips. Now, can we design a better needle? Yeah. If, if I crocheted, I mean, if I still knit it, I probably would be trying because you can always make improvements. So, um, thank you guys so much for joining in. I hope you found it helpful. We'll definitely have to do a part two where I go through and actually work with some of these hooks. Um, we can talk about you guys' grips and how you crochet. Um, I think that would be fun. So until next time, you can catch me uh, live on Instagram this Friday at 12 p.m. Central Time. I will be chatting with Shireen of Smeeny Beanie Knits. So be sure to join us Friday. Uh, and then I will be back here on Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday here on YouTube. So I hope you'll join me then. And, oh, a needle for sewing in ends. Got you. And I do have one of those for jumbo hooks. Um, I'll show you before we go. You can find, now these are for jumbo, if you use jumbo yarn. So these are flexible tapestry needles because you can flex the end open to get your jumbo yarn through it. They are not pointy. So if you're using yarn that requires you to really have a point, um, it's not as good for that. But if you're making like my Luna cardigan or something where you just need to get the bulky yarn underneath some of the stitches, this can be a really fantastic option. And I think these are like two for $4 in our shop if you ever wanted to check them out. But we do love these little flexi needles. All right. Thank you all again for joining in. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Be sure to join the Facebook group so we can continue our chat over there. And I will talk to you all soon. Happy hooking!